Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for stopping by and checking out the card pile. Today, I'm going to tell you a little story about almost meeting my favorite baseball player of all time and showing you a few of his cards. Now, my favorite baseball player of all time is Bill Buckner. And you can say what you want about the Red Sox fiasco and all that, but even before then, uh, even then, he was still my guy, and uh, he was my guy when he played for the Cubs, and he started playing for the Cubs in 1977 after uh, being with the Dodgers, starting out, and when he came to the Cubs in 1977, that is when my family got their first television, and we caught the World Series, that's when Reggie Jackson went nuts, and I was hooked on baseball, hooked on baseball. But before television, growing up, we had to listen to the games on the radio. And since we're right smack dab in the middle of the Midwest, I was flooded with Cubs games, Cardinal games, Cincinnati Red games, White Sox games. And on a good clear night, you maybe get some Milwaukee Brewers games. But anyway, I gravitated towards the Cubs. And then just so happens, Bill Buckner comes that year in 1977. And I instantly liked him. He played hard. Um, he hit well. He just, I don't know, maybe the mustache, who knows. But I dug everything about him. And I, I just loved, you know, the way he played the game. And uh, so the first card I'm going to show you is his 1971 Tops card, his rookie card. This is his second rookie card. But this is the one most people like to go after for some reason. It's fairly sharp. It's a it's a five, but that's cool. And then this is his 1970 card, tops, and he shares it with Jack Jenkins, a pitcher for the Dodgers. So that's pretty cool. So as a kid, being in the Midwest and not having a ton of money, here's here's one of my favorite cards. This is my favorite Bill Buckner card of all time. Uh, just look at it right there. And I was lucky enough to get a PSA 10 found it pretty cheap you know you probably can but yeah that's my favorite bill buckner card he's just ready to hit one out and just just ready to you know hit, hit the ball real solid no matter what if, even if it don't go out a little known fact to bill about bill buckner is he never struck out more than twice in a game i don't even think tony Gwynn can say that and then here's another one of my favorite cards this is from 1983 donruss I lucked out and got another Gem Mint 10, but this is uh, my favorite Diamond King card. So, yeah, these are these are my two favorite Bill Buckner cards, more so than the, the rookie cards. And then some friends of mine knew I was a Bill Buckner fan and sent me this cool patch card. I need to get one from when he played for the Cubs. And this one Project 70 card. My buddy Alan Cottmell sent me this one. That's pretty sweet. So anyway, growing up, I was able to get to a few games at least once or twice a year. And in nineteen in 1977, I was able to uh, not get there yet. I didn't make my first game until 1981, I believe. But anyway, in 1983, July 1st, as a matter of fact, the Cubs were playing the Expos, and uh, they were playing the Expos, and the former teammate of Bill Buckner, Ray Burris, was uh, on the pitching staff for the Expos, and he, uh, here's the back of the 80 Tops, 1980 Tops was one of my favorite card years, really got into 1980 Tops, but anyway, I'm at the game, I'm on the third base side, which is the visitor's dugout. And Bill Buckner come over to the dugout to say hi to some people. There's the back of the Diamond King. And I'm hollering for him, and I'm hollering for him, and he starts to come my way. Well, as he's making his way over, Ray Burris from the Expos hollers up at him. And so Buckner diverts his attention away from me and the seating area and goes over and talks to Ray Burris. And here's a uh, here's a pr pretty cool uh, 
Cubs rally tape. This is like from 1987, I believe. But yeah, anyway. So him and Buckner talk for a few. By now, you know, after about five solid minutes of me waiting, you know, patiently, I wasn't hollering and screaming because I know he was talking to somebody. Here's the back of the rookie card. They finally get done talking and somebody's hollering for Buckner over by their dugout. And so he starts to jog back. And I look at Ray. Ray looks at me and I'm like, what the heck, Ray? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 11. I'm 12 years old. I'm like, what the heck, Ray? And Ray Burris just looks at me, shrugs his head and nods. So that was my uh, first chance meeting Bill Buckner. And, and it just got interrupted. It got totally blown. Go ahead next to the next spring and the oncoming summer, uh, the Cubs had a con little convention in my city in Lafayette, Indiana. And Bill Buckner was uh, supposed to be there. Ryan Sandberg, Rob Dernier, Jim Fry, you know, a lot of players and some coaches and the manager were going to be at this convention. And it was going to be in June, June 6th, I believe. And then all of a sudden, come May of 1984, here they are again, the two rookies. They trade Bill Buckner, the Cubs do, to the Los Angeles Dodgers. I mean, to the Boston Red Sox. He goes to the Red Sox, plays real solid, helps him get to the World Series. You already know the whole World Series fiasco. So that chance in 1983... On July 1st, I mean, yeah, July 1st, 1983, was the closest I ever got to him. And after he retired, I found out kind of where he lived. I couldn't get an address, so I could never hook up with him through the mail. And so that always bummed me out. So I never did get his autograph. And I'm not a big autograph or a patch kind of guy. But it would have been, yeah, see, no one, Buckner gets no respect, and that's just a damn shame. So I never did get his autograph, and I'm not a big autograph guy now or a patch guy, but I always did want to get his autograph. You could probably buy it online. I mean, I've seen it, but just nothing grabbed me, and I'm not really into that, but that would have been one that would have been sweet to have. That would have definitely been my uh, white whale, my creme de la creme, as you would say. So anyway, I still hold a grudge against Ray Burris. I don't own any of his cards in the thousands and thousands of cards I've have. You will not find a Ray Burris on a side note. You will not find a Steve Garvey card either. That's for a whole different video and story. But anyway, Bill Buckner, wish I would have got a chance to meet him or at least shook his hand, you know, slap glove, whatever. It doesn't matter. I always thought he was a great player. Still do. He's still my all time favorite player. I mean, like I mentioned before, he never struck out more than twice in a game. He was the 1980 batting champion in the NL. He ended his career with like 2,700, I think maybe 15, 16 hits, 289 batting average. I mean, if you're going to let in Harold Baines, you got to let in Bill Buckner. That's just my take. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of a little odd and all over the place, but it's just something I wanted to share. You know, my, my uh, affection for the Bill Buckner cards. And being a Cub fan and him being a great Cubby. By the way, he's in the Chicago Cubs Hall of Fame, so that's pretty cool. But, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like Bill Buckner or a Cub fan, or let me know whoever your favorite baseball player is. And I'd also like to mention that just because you have a certain favorite player doesn't mean you have to get every card of them. I don't believe so. And like I mentioned, these are my favorite ones. I have some other common cards that I've picked up over the years. But do I have every Bill Buckner card? No, I do not. Do I want every Bill Buckner card? No, I do not. But I do want the ones I like, and hopefully you like them too. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video or Bill Buckner or anything like that. Please like and subscribe and uh, share if you want. But I really want to know. Here's a side thing. Does Bill Buckner deserve to be in the Hall of Fame or just the very Hall of, Hall of Very Good? 
All right. Well, thanks a lot. I know this was all over the place, but I just wanted to get this out there because, uh, yeah, old Bill Buckner, favorite player of all time. I just figured I'd share that with you about the story about Ray Burris ruining my one and only moment and then the trade ruining my almost second one and only moment. All right. Thanks, folks.